When most people hear the word server when talking about computers, they oftentimes don't understand what it is. They don't think of a server as a normal computer, but something so far out of their grasp or out of their realm that it could never serve a purpose to them. A server is defined as a service or services being provided to a client, user, or resource. In the IT industry, a server is a piece of hardware running a specialized piece of software providing a service. This service could be something as simple as a shared drive or hosting a print spooling service, also known as a print server. The confusion as to what a server is comes largely from the form factor. Most servers are designed to be housed in a rack. They are measured more by the rack spaces they take up versus the size of the motherboard and case it's housed in. When it comes down to the hardware, there aren't many differences from a server and your normal desktop. Sure, the hardware may be different sized, have multiple power supplies, have hot swappable components, but when it comes down to the fundamental core components, there really isn't much of a difference. That's not to say there aren't differences, but let me put this into perspective for you. Intel's answer for CPUs used in enterprise-grade hardware is the Intel Xeon. In the current generation of Intel CPUs, the Xeon uses the same architecture as the Core i7 series processors. These are the processors used in many of your laptops or desktops, used for your gaming rig or your video editing workstation. The main difference comes down to the stability and reliability. Intel will select the silicon chips that run the best, the coolest, the most stable, and with the least amount of errors or flaws, and use these as their Xeon line. The quality control is required for these because in many ways, these chips run our lives. And this is the core difference to the differences in the hardware. Enterprise grade hardware has greater quality control, runs better without issue or errors, and is designed to run 24-7 with zero downtime. So why does this matter to you? When most people look to purchase a new computer, they want one of three things. They want something that just works and is cheap, the best they can get within their budget, or they want the best of the best, money not an option. But why do you need to compromise when there is so much more out there? The unfortunate part of the IT world in enterprise grade hardware comes down to a theory called Moore's Law. Moore's law states that the amount of transistors on an integrated circuit board will double every two years, thus drastically improving performance. Why is this bad for them but good for us? Because everything nowadays relies so heavily on technology, everything is interconnected with the backbones being data centers and the connections between them. As technology grows and expands, data centers must grow and expand as well. Because server space is limited, these data centers swap out the hardware for newer, faster hardware, sooner as opposed to later to prevent serious slowdowns or even worse issues. This leaves the retired hardware up for grabs. Now, because this hardware is everywhere, but no one thinks to use it, the cost is driven down. This is why I'm a huge advocate of using secondhand enterprise grade hardware. As long as you can get past the shortcoming, the pros far outweigh the cons from a performance and cost perspective, which brings me to my last point. In my eyes, I only see four drawbacks to using a server as a normal computer. The size being odd means you will have to get creative. The noise because of the fans could bother you, but that's a personal question you'd have to answer for yourself. The power draw, but that's only if you leave it on 24-7 and if the CPUs are actually taxed, otherwise it won't be too bad. And lastly, the lack of an audio interface, which could be remedied with an audio card or an HDMI connection via video card. Now we're left with the ever-looming question of what server would serve you best. To answer this question, you need to look at a few things and ask yourself a few questions. What do you want to do with this computer? Is this going to be a new gaming computer or is it for general usage? Is this going to be used as a video, photo, or media editing workstation? Let's look at some options. Because I'm most familiar with HP servers and workstations, I'll be basing these options off of that. If you're looking for a conventional desktop experience, then I would recommend one of two things. For what I would call a power user looking for everything, I would recommend a server from the ML series lineup. The ML360 G6 supports dual 6-core Xeon CPUs and up to 288 gigs of RAM. For the media enthusiast, I would recommend a workstation from the Z series lineup. An HP Z600, for instance, was built with media creation and 3D rendering in mind. Now, if you're looking for more of a compact, rack-mountable solution, something from the DL series would serve you well. I personally have a DL360 G6, and it has served me very well. So, I leave you with this question. The next time you're looking at purchasing a new computer, would you consider a second-hand or decommissioned server or workstation? Let me know.